Good morning, seventh graders. Today is May 5th. It is the second day of our Constitution Notes. You are going to be using the same format as you did yesterday, where your notes are on your left, and your questions are on your right. The heading for our notes, we're still in what role did compromise play in the creation of the Constitution. So the first thing we need to talk about is slavery today. And slavery is going to impact the compromises of the Constitution in two ways. So we're going to start off with note number three. Okay, so this is our second page of notes. Slavery in the Constitution. Now the northern states, they wanted to abolish or end the slave trade and slavery. However, the southern states, they threatened to leave the Union. Remember the Union, that is the United States of America, if slavery were abolished. Okay? So they have to come up with a compromise or a solution to this problem. The compromise that they come up with has a few different parts. First of all, the word slavery does not actually appear anywhere in the Constitution. Okay. Slavery, it's agreed on, will not be discussed in Congress until 1808. So basically, they've got 20 years from the creation of the Constitution to figure it out before they have to talk about it again. They do agree that there will be a $10 tax on the importation of each slave. And this is a federal tax. And the idea is that it will hopefully um, be not only a way for the federal government to earn money to help pay its debt, but also to reduce the desire for new slaves to be brought in. This is going to have a much larger adverse effect, though, adverse being bad, um, because it's going to promote the focus on slavery being a lifelong institution versus slavery being just for one's lifetime. Um, and also runaway slaves had to be returned to a state of slavery. So this is something that the North wants. This is something that the South wants. Um, so it's a compromise. And again, slavery, the actual word is not in the Constitution anywhere. So I'm going to read you the section of the Constitution um, in which they discuss slavery, but the word term isn't actually used. The migration or importation of such persons as any of the states now existing shall think proper to admit shall not be prohibited by the Congress prior to the year 1808. So basically, they have 20 years to figure out how to fix things. But a tax or duty may be imposed on such importation. Remember, they agree on a $10 tax. Not exceeding $10 for each person. No person held to service or labor in one state, so basically a slave, under the laws thereof, escaping into another, so even if you escape, okay, shall in consequence of the law or regulation therein be discharged from such service or labor, but shall be delivered upon the claim of the party. So they have to be returned to the owner. Okay. So again, those are the compromises. Slavery also played a role in representation. So remember, the Senate, so a little bit of review from yesterday, the Senate we know is two from each state. And then we know that the House of Representatives is based on population. Okay. 
So the South wanted to count the slave population toward their representation. And for this, they would get more delegates in the House of Representatives, and they would also get more electoral votes for the presidency. So that would mean that they would have a greater say in laws, and they would also have a greater say in who would become president of the United States. Now the North, they did not want the slave population counted because they feared the South will become too powerful. So the compromise they come up with is called the three-fifths compromise. For every five slaves that are in the South, three free people will be counted for taxation and representation. Okay, so down here, for every five slaves, they will count three free persons for taxation and representation. Now I want you to look at the key words here. The South says, great. We are getting a larger number of a population based on the slaves for representation. That's what we wanted. The North says, well, if you're going to get something positive out of it, you should have to get something negative out of it as well. So they're going to increase the taxation that that state is required to pay based on population. So this is the North's compromise, and this is the South's part of the compromise. So now you have four questions okay, for today's assignment. Now these four questions go on the right-hand side of your paper. I'm going to read through the text of CRQ1 just because it is from the document. Okay. And then you're going to be responsible for answering the four questions. Being enacted by the Senate and the House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled, so enacted, means created that from and after the first day of January 1808 it shall not be lawful to import or bring into the US or the territories thereof from any foreign kingdom place or country any Negro mulatto or person of color with intent to hold, sell, or dispose of such Negro mulatto or person of color as a slave, or to be held in service of labor. So the question asks you, according to this law, what restriction did the United States Congress place on slavery in 1808? Don't forget to TTQA the question. Then there are three multiple choice questions. And when you're done with today's assignment, can you please upload a picture of your page? Remember, it needs to be handwritten. And if you are choosing to type it, then it needs to be placed into your own words. All right. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Tuesday.